Have you ever said something that you wish you could take back? Have you, has your mouth ever gotten you in trouble? We're going to be looking at James chapter 3 as we talk about our words and how our words often become our downfall. And our bottom line for this morning is what you do will speak more than what you say. I'm Pastor Stevens, so welcome back to our study in the book of James as we talk about what it means to have a faith that works. And as I mentioned, uh, ask you the question, have you ever said something that has gotten you into trouble? And, and the answer most likely is yes. We often allow our words to, or our, our, our emotions to influence our words. And sometimes we let our emotions get the best of us and we often say things that we wish we could take back. I think back to a few times in my life when I have said some things that I really regret saying and I really wish that I could take those things back. Uh, we've discussed over the past few weeks what it's like to have a faith that takes action or a faith that works. Um, and this big idea is of uh, the overall um, series is that having the appearance of faith is not the same as having faith. So what about you? How is your faith? Do you try to appear faithful or do you allow your faith to actually work based on your belief and trust and, and the example that Christ has in your life? Um, James finished chapter one and this kind of sets the tone for where we're going this morning. He says, if you claim to be religious but do not control your tongue, you are fooling only yourself. Um, and as we said last week, our words often become our downfall. So let's kind of springboard into this idea that what you do will speak more than what you say. Uh, James begins, as we look in chapter 3, uh, verse 1, he says, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Look at this. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would per be perfect and could also control ourselves in any other way or in, in every way, he says. Uh, could there be any more truer statement? He says, we all make many mistakes. That could just kind of define humanity uh, in, in, in its whole, right? If you look all the way back to Adam and Eve and the mistake they made by uh, eating the forbidden fruit and then going down the, la the line to Cain murdering his brother Abel and, and David uh, with his mistake with this Bathsheba and, and Moses uh, striking the rock instead of speaking to the rock and, and on and on and on throughout Scripture you see the mistakes that men make based on emotions, based on uh, selfish desires. And then we look at our own personal lives and, and look at your life and, and look back at how the mistakes you have made have cost you dearly, uh, maybe a relationship, maybe a friendship, maybe whatever it may be. Maybe the words that you have said to someone has hurt them so deeply that, that they refuse to have anything to do with you. See, if we, he says, if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect uh, and could also control ourselves in every way because our words, as I said, often become our downfall. Um, Controlling our tongue is very difficult. Our emotions often direct or dictate our words. That's why the scripture says, do not let the sun go down when you are angry. Uh, the power of our words can be more impactful than we could ever understand or ever realize. And our, our, see, our words often result from our intentions. And our intentions come from our hearts and our heart desire and what our heart wants. And see, our heart can be deceitful. And our heart can lead us astray. And, and Scripture over and over tells us to be careful to guard our heart because our heart can be poisoned by sin and by deceit and by uh, temptation. We often uh, use our words to become a weapon, so to speak. We, we use them as a weapon against people, especially when we feel hurt uh, what I've found is we often sarcastically joke about the things that really bother us. Or when we get angry, we let our emotions take over and we say things that we really wish we could take back. This is the danger of our words. If we continue in uh, chapter 3, he says that we can, uh, he gives this analogy of a boat and of a horse being directed by a small device. The same can go for our tongue. Our words can direct our whole life. They can direct our whole relationships, the tone for, for how people uh, interact with us. 
it can make us go somewhere that we don't want to be. And it is dangerous enough to cause a wake of destruction in our lives. As he looks like, as he says this in verse 5, in the same way the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, um, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. Uh, just as he uses the illustration of a person taming all sorts of animals, uh, but a person cannot tame his tongue. Look at verse 7 and 8. He says, People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Uh, if we look at verse uh, 11, he says this, Does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you cannot draw fresh water from a salty spring. And, and what he's saying there is in your heart is your intentions. And when you allow what's in your heart to come out of your mouth, then your words can be destructive. And we cannot tame our tongue. We cannot tame our words when we cannot guard our hearts. Um, he uses the uh, word... In other words, he says this, Words have a way of showing favor in one breath while cursing in the next. Because our words follow our emotions, which follow our intentions, which come from our hearts, they can cause so much destruction and so much chaos if we do not allow our words to become unchecked, or we allow our words to, to become unchecked. James in 13 and 14 says this, If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with humility. But if you are bitter and jealous because of selfish ambition, do not cover it up while boasting and lying, or with boasting and lying. See, what you do will speak louder than what you have to say. And this is, because, this is important because our actions have a way of bringing peace. And so what he's saying here is that we need to find the wisdom and instruction of God to motivate our actions. And in verse 15 and 16, he says this, uh, For jealousy and selfish, selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. If we find any kind of selfishness, we, kind of, we, we, we react based on how we emotionally feel in the moment. If we react because we feel hurt, because we feel defeated, and we, re we react because we're angry, our words are going to cause destruction, just like that wildfire. Well, what he says here, um, that we need to have, uh, he says, for whether there is jealousy and selfish ambition, you will find disorder and evil of every kind. But, verse 17, the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy. It is always sincere. So sometimes if we act upon our feelings, we say and do things that are contrary to God's wisdom and instructions. So it is more than what you do. It is more of just doing. It is following the wisdom of God in what you do. Basically this, our actions must be driven by mercy. What is mercy? Even though you feel like they deserve to hear what you have to say. Even though they feel like, they, or you feel like they deserve to be treated a certain way. You show mercy through your actions in the wisdom instruction from God. And you don't tell them what you're thinking or what you want to tell them. But you show kindness and mercy and gentleness. And you don't act upon how you're feeling. You check yourself. You pray to God. You ask Him to show you guidance. You ask Him to show you instructions. And then you act upon the wisdom of God through mercy, through kindness, through gentleness, not based upon your anger and your selfish ambition. When this happens, James says that we plant seeds, verse 18, uh, in, of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. And, and that's what our actions can do for us if we follow the instruction and the wisdom of God. And we do not allow our words to become our downfall, but we allow our actions to speak louder than our words. And, and see, a faith that works is a faith that acts. A faith that acts is a faith, a, a faith 
that listens. And a faith that listens is a faith that knows God. And if you do not know God, you cannot act upon the wisdom and instruction from God. And see, that's the key to having peace in your relationships. That's the key to building a friendship that will be based upon the wisdom of God. That, that is how you keep your tongue in check. That is how you keep your words from becoming your downfall. And that is how you speak with your actions. And, and, and what you do will speak louder than what you have to say. And see, a faith that listens is a faith that knows God. And, and that is where we're going to set ourselves up for next week as we look at drawing closer to God when our words become our downfall, when we allow uh, the destruction and chaos from our tongue to cause in our lives, and, and we need help. Who do you turn to when all chaos is breaking loose uh, or coming down on you? You turn to God. You draw closer to God. And that's what we're going to look at next week as we finish up chapter 3, uh, or we look at chapter 4, excuse me, and, and we look at this idea of drawing closer to God. So see you next week. Have a good day. Hope and pray that this helps you out in some way that you will be able to keep your words in check and realize that if we act upon the wisdom instruction from God, we can show mercy and have peace with all those around us in our relationships, whether it's a friendship or whatever it may be. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week, and have a good day.